Well, ladies and gentlemen, hello again, and welcome to another Reflected Reality Simulations video. My name's Graham, this is X-Plane 11, and the Torxim SR22 with the Avidyne Integra flight deck. This is a very quick preview video of the Integra. The aircraft is releasing very shortly, and I've been very fortunate to be on the beta team. I've been having a lot of fun flying the aircraft. So I thought I'd show you just a few differences with the uh, Integra compared to the G1000 aircraft. In the uh, product with the SR22, you get the naturally aspirated and turbo normalized, just like you do with the G1000 aircraft. You also get the option of the Avidyne DFC90 autopilot or the STEC55, and there's quite a few differences between them. I prefer the Avidyne uh, autopilot because it behaves much more like an airliner uh, autopilot. On the multifunction display, You've got the uh, map with the custom terrain rendering, and you've got airspace display. It's got terrain awareness. You've got some uh, interesting trip uh, information there. You've got nearest airports. It's got checklists and the engine monitoring page. Compared to the Garmin system, it doesn't have the uh, automatic scaling on the uh, fuel flow. You don't have the fuel flow on the gauge, so you have to lean it according to the power tables up here, or from the manual, or with the um, turbo normalized, you lean it according to the, the schedule in the manual. What it's really interesting though is the, uh, for me, is the PFD and the handling. I'll pop out the autopilot just now, bring that uh, over into the left hand side here, there's a little grab spot there. You can also pop out all the screens, um, they will centralize on the mouse cursor, so if I put the screen up here for example, it pops out at the top, and uh, if I put the screen down here, it pops out at the bottom. This little close up there. What you can do is click and drag and it'll pop out exactly where you want it to do, uh, where you want it to. And you can do the same with the MFD. If you want it frameless, click on the Avidyne logo at the top and you get a frameless pop out, which is fairly useful. You can still close it in the same way. You've got two GNS uh, 430s, the Laminar Research uh, 430s. You can also fit it with the um, Reality XP software, but I don't have that. Now most aircraft fitted with two GPSs, uh, the second GPS is rather, uh, it's not really got much use in X-Plane. But with the Avidyne flight deck, it really does. So what we're gonna do is take off from Dundee. We're gonna fly ahead to the Delta November Delta, fly outbound on this procedure, the 255, turn around, fly back in, and we'll circle to land back on runway 27. It's very similar to an approach I did with the TBM 900 uh, about a year or so ago. The flight plan's all set up, the approach is all set up in the uh, aircraft, so we don't really need to worry about that. What I will point out is that on the Integra map here, you notice that it isn't showing the flight plan. That's because it's in the approach phase, and with the stock laminar GPSs, it won't uh, transfer that information over to the Integra GPS. It doesn't make it available in the API, although it will do it with the Reality XP, I believe. It's not a big deal because we've got uh, the ability to look at it on the uh, G1000 screen here as well. If I just pop it back over here, you can see the flight plan. So you can still see it, it just doesn't transfer the Integra. And I believe that Torxim are trying to work with Laminar Research to improve their API. So it really depends on Laminar adding support uh, to their API to get that information across. Anyway, enough talking, let's fly the aircraft. Heading bug, I'm going to push the sync button here to make sure it aligns. Altitude bug, I'm going to go up to 2,200 feet, so you push the uh, line select here. And uh, you can change how many digits you're adjusting, so you can have thousands, or you can have hundreds, or you can have tens. In this case, it's going to be 2,200 feet. I'm going to use the flight directors for departure. So the flight directors come up in green. I'm going to put it into airspeed hold mode. So it's at the moment targeting 90 knots. I'm going to increase that to 120. I, I like having the 3D, uh, the 2D pop out. It's it's much more intuitive in my mind than having to look down and look up here. So let's put 200, uh, 120 knots on there. Uh, where I've got uh, GPSS steering. So I'll engage that. We get GPSS. It's going to the Delta November Delta. And most importantly, I need to remember to arm out as well. Although I've got 2,200 in here, if you don't have ALT in blue, 
and then shift up here, it will not capture. So you've got to make sure that's done as well. So flight directors, we've got indicated airspeed, GPS steering, and uh, out blue. We'll talk about GPS steering once we get airborne. Flaps are safe to take off, fuel sufficient, boost pumps on, mixtures full rich, and just check on the page here, all temperatures are good. So I would normally have this page up on the uh, takeoff and the approach, uh, takeoff and the final stages of the approach. Okay, all straightforward. Oh, let me just check the trim as well. Just double check the trims in the takeoff range. Switches are set and uh, let's get airborne. Brakes released and off we go. The standard series thing, it gets to 2500, holds there for a little bit and then goes up to 2700 as you push the power lever forward. Keep it straight ahead on the centre line, there's 60, 65, and just ease it into that climb now. We've got positive climb, I'm just going to target about 7.5 degrees just as we did with the G1000 aircraft. And once we're above 80 knots and above 200 feet, which uh, we kind of are just now, I'll bring the flaps up. And I'll just hold that 7.5 degrees until the flight director comes up to meet me. Turn slightly on course towards the Delta, November Delta now. Correct onto the flight directors and we should maintain 120 knots on the climb out. To make a power reduction I'll come back to about 2500 RPM just to improve the noise footprint ever so slightly. And notice we've got the angle of attack gauge on top of the uh, instrument panel as well, which is really very useful. I'll engage the autopilot. You see the uh, AP ready light goes out, AP's in, and you've got magenta flight directors, which is a good indication that you're on the autopilot. And climbing away 120 knots up to 2,200 feet, checking we've got out blue armed on there. So I'll bring out the GPS here, just so you can keep an eye on what's going on. There's direct track 254. So it's just going to turn and follow outbound. Excellent. So it turns on track. Just about to level off, another 300 feet or so to go. I said it was important to understand we had GPS steering. So what does GPS steering mean? Well, when it's in GPS steering, the autopilot is reading from the GPS directly. Okay, it's reading this page here, and it's simply steering the aircraft. Air levels off, I'm just going to bring the power back to around about uh, 17 inches. Again, you've got the information up here, but it's also handy to read it off the PFD, especially if you're using the, the map page, I find. So it's always in the same place on the PFD, whereas on the Avidyne multifunction, it does tend to move around a little bit. So 17 uh, inches. Within GPS steering, it doesn't matter what's displayed on the HSI down here. So I can change the HSI into VLOC mode, displaying the localizer now, but the aircraft is still following the magenta line. That's the advantage you have of using GPS steering. You can pre-select your VLOC. So for example, I want to check my localizer course, so I can set that to 092 as required. I've got the frequency tuned, it's all ready to go, but it's still navigating in GPS. I'm just going to synchronize my heading bug by pushing the, uh, the knob there. And having GPS steering allows us to do a, a dual mode intercept where I can use the GPS and take it all the way around to the localizer. Now the G1000 will do the same, but you've got to basically make a little bit of a leap of faith that when it changes over, from GPS to VLOC presentation that it's going to give you something sensible on the VLOC. So with the G1000, we'd normally pop it into heading mode, then adjust the, uh, the VOR radio, the localizer presentation, then go back to GPS and then back into heading, uh, back into nav. You don't have that with this because you can tell the autopilot to follow the GPS, whereas nav follows the CDI. I hope that makes sense. So it's just approaching the turn. I'll pop up the other GPS just so you can see what's on that as well. If I come onto the nav page, 
you'll see that I've got the airfield itself selected and the OBS mode selected. So it's giving me a magenta line inbound on runway 27. I'm going to use that to help me with the circling procedure. I'm also using the auxiliary display here simply to give me a distance to the airport. The aircraft isn't fitted with a DME, so using GPS2 as a stand-in for the DME is very useful, having that auxiliary page down there. So turning to intercept, and this is where the stock laminar uh, 430 uh, navigation code can be an issue. And it's, it's always done this, it's just a case of monitoring it, but it's trying to intercept the uh, 092 track inbound. We just need to make sure that it doesn't actually turn inside the target waypoint. That's why I'm using this blue arrow to point to it here. So I'm trying to go on 092. The waypoint is on this heading. If I turn onto about 050, that's maybe not ideal. Now I know it's kind of going to work on this approach, but we just keep an eye on it. Because I've got ILS deviation indications there, I'll click Approach. And we get Nav Blue and Glide Slope Blue. So it's still in GPS steering, it has sequenced correctly, the localizer's coming in, and then it transfers over to approach mode, holding 2,200 feet, waiting for the glide slope. And now it's navigating solely on the ILS, just like any other aircraft. So I'll get rid of this uh, GPS here. So from this point onwards, it should be reasonably straightforward. I'm going to synchronize the heading bug initially onto 092. Haskell deflection on the glide slope below the speed limit for the first stage of flaps. So there's flaps 50%. It goes into glide slope mode and it starts descending. I'll just make a slight power reduction to around about uh, 16 inches or so. And that's us tracking downhill on the approach. If this was a straightforward ILS, I'd set the missed approach altitude on the bug here. However, I'm going to circle to land, so I'm going to put the circling altitude of 800 feet on here. Now, within glide slope mode, it's important to understand I cannot arm altitude capture. If I push out, it will level off. Also, with this autopilot, if I push VS, it will target what the VS bug is set to. Notice the VS bug is set to zero. I can synchronize the VS bug by pushing this button here. So to level off at 800 feet, I'm going to put it into VS mode and then arm alt. But I'll leave that until we get a little bit closer to the target altitude. Just checking the speeds around about 100 knots or so. The other thing I can do, because I know I'm going to break off and circle, I'm going to turn right, fly out over the river here, and then come back in and land on runway 27, is I'll set the heading bug. I'm looking for a 45 degree initial turn, so at uh, 092 becomes uh, 137, I guess. So let's get out of glide slope mode. Again, I'm going to push to sync the vertical speed. I'm going to go into vertical speed mode, check it's in vertical speed, push Alt, I get Alt Blue, Alt Blue, going down to 800 feet. So now it will level off at 800 feet, but it's still using the, the localizer to steer with. Always looking reasonable. So 200 feet to go, speed's reasonable, and with a circling approach, I don't need to break off as soon as I level at 800 feet. I'll give it a chance to settle out first. So it's gone into alt capture mode. I'm going to adjust the power setting ever so slightly. I want to maintain around about 90 knots now. OK, and looks like a reasonable spot for the turn. Just check the timer here. Goes into heading mode at 20 seconds. I'm looking for 45 seconds from the point we start the turn until we start the next turn. 
So that's going to be a zero 05 seconds. We start the reverse turn. As we're tracking outbounds, I'm going to change the nav source to GPS 2, and I'm going to change the bearing pointer to GPS 2. Now those were preset up with the OBS selected, so now I've got a cross track indication and a pointer for the runway. This is effectively helping me fly the circling approach. 10 seconds out to return on track. Speed's reasonable. There we go, 0 0.5, left on to 0 0.92. And we'll track downwind. So notice the deviation bar here. Because it's lined on the runway, it's giving me useful cross-track information. It's in fact the same information as you can see on this screen here, but just presented on the CDI to help out. And the OBS function is really very useful in this sim to help restore some of that situational awareness that you lose by flying uh, in a desktop environment. The angle of attack indicator there tells me I don't really want to go any slower, but that's fine. You can see the bearing pointer is pointing to the center of the airfield as well. So again, it just helps build in another layer of situational awareness that you don't really have uh, as much of in the sim. So it was 45 seconds until we started our 45 degree turn, or, you know, start the clock at for 45 seconds, turn 45 degrees, and then turn onto a downwind track. As we're passing the touchdown zone here, which is around about now, we're going to go for another 45 seconds. So again, that's uh, 0 0.5 seconds on there, on the clock. Whilst you're tracking here, I can take the autopilot out by pushing this button. If you're on the S-Tech aircraft, the buttons are up here to do this. If you push the button on the yoke, it will take the autopilot and the flight directors off. So I just want the autopilot off just now. And my flight directors turn green to tell me that I'm flying it myself. Another 10 seconds until we start the turn. So I'm pretty much finished with the autopilot. I'll disconnect it using my joystick trigger there. Remove the screen. Final stage of flap. Roll to about 25 degrees and I'm looking for about 500 feet per minute. So having the at uh, angle of attack indicator up there is really good for visual flying. You can set your views up so that you've always got your angle of attack in view. And that's really all that matters for visual flying there. a good spot to turn in. Let's see how we get on. There's back at the approach speed. Pappies, I've got two whites and two reds. Should be able to keep that going. So 500, just a touch on the low side now. I'll just reduce that rate of descent. Remember it didn't it's it slightly steeper. Back on two and two. And having that angle of attack indexer right up there beside the you know, where you're looking, it's really helpful to get that speed right. Most importantly, it tells you if you're too slow. There we go, back on profile. So speed about 80 knots, that's reasonable for the weight we're at. Looking at the far end of the runway, easing the power off slowly and just bringing the nose up. We'll hold it there, just wait for it to bleed off the last bit of energy and down we go. Lower the nose gradually and just keep the aircraft on the centre line. Some gentle braking. I've only got a joystick button for the braking, so it's a bit more abrupt than it needs to be on my simulator. And that's us. We can turn at the turning spot and track back in, park up, and have another go. We'll just stop it on the runway and I'll set the parking brake. So I hope you enjoyed that little preview of the uh, Integra flight deck. 
One of the issues I have um, with my computer, I'm running on an i5 2500K, which is, uh, you know, nine or ten years old now. It really is very far under the recommended specifications to run this aircraft. So I do have some performance issues when I'm trying to record videos with it. And I've got a new computer on order. That's going to be here in a couple of weeks. So maybe once that arrives and it's all set up, I'll be able to do some more detailed videos on the Avidyne flight deck. I'm very grateful for Torxim inviting me onto the beta of the aircraft. I love the fact we've actually got some variety in general aviation avionics. It's nice to see an aircraft that isn't the G1000 setup. And the way the GPS steering, particularly on the DFC-90 uh, and on the S-Tech, the way that works with the Integra flight deck, uh, it really goes a long way to work around some of the limitations on the Laminar 430 installation. And some of the other beta pilots that were flying with the um, Reality XP stuff had a very good experience with that as well. Thanks so much for watching the video. And uh, as I said, I do hope you tune in again soon for some further content. Thank you.